Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dave and this is Quinn and today's article is from vice.com and it's titled Jeff Bezos is so powerful he basically dictates the minimum wage now. I don't know how much truth there is to that. It sounds pretty opinionated. Right. The Amazon CEO announced he's upping pay for his co- for his workers, which could force competitors to follow suit and bolster his own image too. Minimum wage, he looks like evil, dude. What, he, he looks he Lex looks Luthor. Uh, yeah, he looks like s- strikingly uh, content about something. He's very internal, you know. He has looked at his bank introspective, account. Introspective, you know. He's like, <laughs> he's looked at his bank account know. in that picture. Right, right. And the, the photo is captioned Jeff Bezos after checking his bank account. On Tuesday, the world's richest man made a concession to the hundreds of thousands of Americans in his employ. The lowest wage of all Amer- Amazon employees in the U.S. will be $15 an hour starting November 1st. I wonder what they're paying him now. Minimum wage, probably, right? Mm-hmm. Accor- starting November 1st, according to a statement put out by, the co- by company founder and CEO Jeff Bezos, the pay floor affects part-time and temp workers, as well as people who work at subsidiary Whole Foods, and it stands to impact the larger economy. Bezos has pledged to lobby the federal government for legislation that nudges other retailers to follow suit. As the world's richest man, I guarantee this guy knows that minimum wage doesn't work. Right. He wants minimum wage to be the the spotlight because that means his pay can be astronomical. Right. But the real issue is when you raise minimum wage, everyone follows suit and you just inflate the economy. Right. Right? When, When you're making that, when people make such a low amount per hour like even $15 an hour, it's, you're not really getting that because after the person pays their taxes and everything, it's probably more like yeah, that's 13 accounted, or 12 or something. But you know? that's accounted into the whole minimum wage should be this much. Sure. But if you ask me, minimum wage should be what politicians get paid. If that's enough to live, why can't you live off it, you know? And then right. the, politicians, the politicians will basically be able to decide their own pay. You want to get a million dollars an hour? Vote for it. But everyone else gets it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's unreasonable and you can't do that. And right. I, think, I think that would be a, one of the, uh, the better decisions. The pay floor affects part-time and temp workers. Did I already read that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. The decision was immediately praised not just as a hashtag win for the prog- progressive left, but for Bernie Sanders in particular. That's because the liberal U.S. senator from Vermont created a petition in August calling out the absurdity of Bezos' earning. More money in 10 seconds than the median employee of Amazon makes in an entire year. Wow. Sanders also proposed a bill last month called the Stop Bad Employers by Zeroing Out Subsidies. The Bezos Act. (laughs) Which would hold companies liable if their workers needed government help to scrape by. Oh, I heard about that. And while it may seem naive in 2018 to think someone worth upwards of $165 billion could be motivated by anything other than craven capitalism, the statement Amazon used to trumpet the decision suggested it was in fact motivated, at least in part, by people calling Bezos out for sucking so much. Huh. Uh, yeah, so what, are prices on Amazon going to change? Stuff like that. If you raise minimum wage, does, is he taking a pay cut or are we paying more? If he makes a salary of a person in a few seconds, mm-hmm. 10 seconds, he's not paying enough. more money than the median employee. That's not the low-end warehouse or lowest person working. Mm-hmm. Median? That means he's making the median household income of a family of, of a family so what in is 10 it, seconds. 50 grand in 10 seconds? That's, that's outrageously. Yeah, he doesn't need that. Just let me get 10 seconds worth, man. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You know? Yeah, you could just not be a douchebag. He owns the entire global marketing. Well, China's got their own I name, mean, too. To, in, in, the poor, in the guy's defense, they did catch him in, with a, a very you know, um, evil sort of looking photo of him <laughs> laughing almost like, you know, uh-huh. he's... he's it, it's, and it's kind of funny how the, the picture you can paint of someone he was probably just a, by the photo you pick for their article. You know, and I'm not going to judge the guy by by that. But, yeah. You know. We listened to our critics, thought hard about what we wanted to do, and decided we wanted to lead, Bezos said. We're excited about this change and encourage our competitors and other large employers to join us. He's trying to make the world burn. 
Of course, it's not that simple. Historically, critics have argued much of Amazon's growth came from bleeding and buying out rivals. The idea was that if competitors refused to be acquired, Amazon would just sell whatever they did at a loss. Not having to worry about shedding money in the meantime, thanks to incredible overall revenue and market share. Eventually, the smaller company might go out of business, or at least be rendered vulnerable. That's what happened with Zappos in 2009, and right now Amazon may want to pressure competitors like Target into taking on an expense, higher wages they weren't necessarily prepared for, and fail. Yeah, see, I, that's pretty much what I said. So it's so they're if, trying to get people. If to, someone does, if a company does that, they can. It's more. It's easier to buy out other companies too, right? Yeah, he wants people to fail. He wants to look like, oh, I'm such a good guy. I'm giving people the minimum wage. Well. It's not the minimum wage, though. I guess it's his minimum wage now. But still, he think, he's trying to make everyone else look bad, and they have to follow suit now or look bad, and he looks like a, a an angel, you know, mm-hmm. when he's okay with bleeding money to put them under. To figure out whether Bezos' and uh, Bezos announcement was a good thing, a, sin- a sinister one or both, I called up Marshall Steinbaum, a research director and fellow at the left-leaning Roosevelt Institute. He painted a dark picture of the world's richest man, wielding incredible power over the American labor market. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he, he can do what he wants, and it's hugely destructive and chaotic. You know? Mm-hmm. Raising minimum wage isn't helping anyone. Because now, in order to go to the grocery store and get milk, well, that grocery store has to charge more for their employees. So that milk just went up $2. Well, congratulations on your $2 raise. You're now spending it. You know? Right. Nothing's changed. you got to stop the rich from being rich. This is almost like a distraction because one of the real uh, ways to solve the problem would be to put a limit on how much Bezos can actually make, you know, which is kind of messed up because he is the one who monopolized the entire market industry in America, you know. So he did a lot of work and he, a little bit of luck, work, and the right moves. But still, it's all, all everything, every decision was right. And so, can you punish? Can should you restrict someone that just made but all the right decisions? He is pretty cutthroat. He is cutthroat though. But it's all legal. You can you can bleed a business dry. You know yeah. you're allowed to. But is that bad? That's the question. These capitalist tactics allow people to become Bezos, the richest man in the world, by a lot. Like he's got twice as much as the like Bill Gates or something almost. Wow. Yeah. Vice. How much of this minimum wage increase is actually the result of political pressure from people like Bernie, and how much is about their competitors? Marshall Steinbaum said, I think broadly speaking, it is partly right to say it was caused by political pressure. There's no way of knowing in particular if it was caused by the introduction of the Stop Bezos bill by senators in Congress, but my impression is that Amazon has taken a lot of flack for bidding these, what is this, uh, quarter two proposals, HQ2 proposals, against each other and for trying to get subsidies from cities that would have the headquarters. Oh yeah, they were trying to like pressure people into like give us tax breaks or and we'll put our headquarters there. Mm. So yeah, that's what it is, headquarters too, their second headquarters. And they've done that on a smaller scale for warehouse locations. I think there's generally been a public questioning of, well, what are we really getting out of this? By giving corporate subsidies for these gigantic and powerful companies for this gigantic and powerful company that is both managed and largely owned by the world's richest person and they're paying out poverty wages. Yeah, it's just, that's capitalism. It's This illustrates how horrible capitalism can be, mm-hmm. you know? But then the opposite end is capitalism. Without capitalism, the opposite is uh, communism, which would encourage other types of bad people, you know? Right. Is this where I am? Yeah. And this is a repeating pattern that has been seen in American political history, both in terms of campaigns pressuring individual companies to adopt wage policies that then create pressure both in politics to level up the playing field and also new standards that the same activists can then take to other companies. It is definitely right to see this is caused by politics, and I don't think that any that's any way in tension with its matter of predictability in terms of labor economics, frankly. If they're doing this to harm their competitors, more power to them. That's the kind of competition we want. Oh, oh, okay, I guess. But except you're harming the economy. This doesn't work. I'll stand by that. What are your thoughts? I'm going to be honest with you, Dave. I didn't understand a whole lot that they were saying there. Yeah, me neither. I didn't like that interview that, that I had to read. 
you know what it really makes me think of uh, is that if you if you want to support if you if you want companies like this to lose power just boycott don't don't use it even though it's so easy and cheap to use their services uh, if you would like to you could go shop locally and then you could probably do that but it doesn't mean that a hundred million other people aren't going to go and use Amazon at the same time yeah it's a personal choice do what you want really and my thoughts are that uh, monopolies are horrible they're very bad uh, Amazon I, I use Amazon all the time. I love Amazon. Got Amazon Prime, you know. You get, you, I hate waiting for stuff. Two days, ne- the next day it's here. Sometimes it's here the same day. It is amazing. I, uh, I, I hate how they mail me stuff so quickly and it's so cheap. Because <laughs> then you want to buy more. No, but uh, the future is going to be ruled by corporations. Uh, that's my belief. And uh, this is just the starting point. So, uh Thanks for watching the video. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video, and we'll see you in the next one.